not be talking about Fall of Cadia or anything like that, because the last video I did in that was awful, and I don't think anything I could say could really do it justice. Um, and I'm not that type of person. I don't talk about what everything else is, everyone else is talking about. I talk about what I want to talk about. So, in regards to 40k, I thought I'd talk about something a bit different today. Now, I was cruising around on 1D4chan, as I do. You know, sometimes the articles are pretty funny, and sometimes it's hilarious to have a go through them. And I came across a page which listed, um, an alternate heresy scenario. Well, a number of them, actually. It was quite interesting. It had... You know, different things like Gilliman, you know, betrayed the Emperor, you know, what would happen, stuff like that. But the one that caught my eye was a scenario where the Emperor decided to join Chaos. And it listed the whole heresy surrounding that. Which I thought was an interesting idea, you know, if um, the Emperor went down the route of Aramin or the Gash or Archeon and tried to become his own Chaos God and usurp the other ones. Um, now, I was actually reading the page and it was quite interesting how the author kind of split the Primarchs, um, you know, how many stayed loyal and how many stayed traitor. So I kind of wanted to reevaluate that and maybe get your opinions on it. So I kind of read about it and thought about it, and using my own, you know, knowledge of the heresy and the Primarchs and their character, I decided to make my own list of, if the Emperor joined Chaos, who would stay loyal and who wouldn't. Now, these are all up to for, you know, negotiation, and if you disagree with me, then feel free to list them in the comments. But for now, let's start with loyalists. Dun dun dun. Now when I say loyalist, I mean loyalist is in the term of these are the people that would willingly follow um, the Emperor into chaotic damnation, um, and for a variety of reasons. So let us go. Alright, first one is Lorgar. Now this is pretty obvious. Lorgar and the word bearers. You all know how this goes. Now, Lorgar was batshit insanely loyal to the Emperor to the point of worshipping him as a god, and when he rebuked him and said he wasn't a god, um, he went off to worship Chaos instead. So if the Emperor one day just said, fuck it, and said, hey Lorgar, uh, yes, um, there are gods, these are these gods, I want to usurp them and become a god myself, will you help me? Then, of course, Lorgar's going to do it. It's just obvious, and I don't think any of us can really argue that. Alright. Number two. Fulgrim of the Emperor's Children. Now, uh, some of you might argue and negotiate this, but I personally think that Fulgrim's, Fulgrim's pride, vanity, ego, would all be very easily manipulated by the Emperor in favor of him falling to chaos. Now, we're going to remove the Sword of Lear from the discus discussion. The Sword of Lear can go fuck itself, which it probably would enjoy. Now, Fulgrim, sorry, and the Emperor's children. Um, Fulgrim was already known to, well, his, in his psychotic quest for perfection, he was already authorized the, you know, the tinkering and the changing and the modifying of the gene of his own legion's gene seed, in a brazen defiance to the Emperor, which shows that his quest for perfection, you know, is unmatched by anything, even his own loyalty to his father. So, if the Emperor came up to him and said, "Son," You know, I have a way for you to gain even more perfection, you know, um, for you to be perfect in my eyes and never fail me and be the most perfect in the land, you know, by selling your soul to Slanesh, then Fulgrim would do it. He is that batshit loyal to the Emperor and, well, batshit loyal to the quest of perfection, I should say, not the Emperor, um, that he would. It's just kind of obvious. Alright, we go? Cool. Number three, another one you can't really negotiate or argue with, Conrad Kurz and the Night Lords. Now, I spent ages thinking about this one until I realized I was probably massively overthinking it. I was thinking, you know, oh, Kurz's quest for justice and, you know, his hatred for tyranny, you know, would compel him to betray the, you know, to, to stand against the Emperor, or maybe he'd do both, or maybe... But then I realized I'm talking about Conrad Kurz and the Eighth Legion here. If the Emperor let them go off the leash and let them slaughter a few hundred worlds um, and, you know, destroy and kill and burn and do whatever they want to do, then they'd take it. They would do it. Without, within a heartbeat. So, if the Emperor said, Curse, slaughter 10,000 planets in my name and sacrifice their souls to chaos, then he'd go, hell yeah, and do it. Because his Legion are all a bunch of murderers, rapists, psychotic bastards, and his multiple personality disorder makes him a psychotic bastard as well. 
So I can't really argue with that. All right, we cool? We cool. Next on the list is Rogal Dawn. Now I know what you're thinking. What, Dawn never? Well, the thing is, I think for Dawn, his utmost psychotic loyalty to the Emperor, um, loyalty beyond anything else, would end up compelling him to fall, I think. He would follow his father into damnation out of loyalty, not because he wanted to, but out of loyalty. This is the guy that, when the Edict of Nikea came down, um, he didn't just, you know, send his librarians back into the, you know, companies as everyone else did. No, he imprisoned them, locked them up, and sealed them behind wards and anti-magic runes and shit, um, in a psychotic dedication of loyalty to his father's will. So, if his father said, follow me, you know, I'm going to do this, then I think Dawn would probably do it. No offense to Dawn, you're a cool guy, but I think your utmost loyalty is a bit of a downside in this case. Alright. Next one is Ferris Manus. Once again, it's kind of hard for this because there isn't too much lore or fluff on Ferris, but I think Ferris's loyalty, um, his utmost loyalty to the Emperor and his willingness for strength, I think would compel him down this road. Um, I mean, I know what you're saying and I know what you think, you know, Fulgrim, you know, Fulgrim offered him chaos and he threw it back in his face and turned away from it. But if his father did it, then I think there'd be more of a sway there. If his father convinced him that chaos was the path to true strength for humanity and it was the right thing to do, then I do think he would probably do it. And the other reason is, even if he didn't do it, I think quite a few of his legion would. Because it was actually stated in the heresy, I think it was, I can't remember what exactly the fluff was, but I do remember reading it, that a number of Iron Hands actually fell and joined Horus and fell to Chaos after the, or during the heresy, because they viewed Ferris Manus was weak, because he got himself killed, and Horus must be strong, therefore, you know, follow the path of strength, follow Horus. So, sorry old Ferris, mate, but you're gonna fall, probably. Uh, next one. This one, I wasn't sure what, whether to put him in the undecided category or not, but I, once again, same with Dawn, I think his absolute psychotic loyalty kind of put him in this spot. Um, that's Lionel Johnson of the Dark Angels. Now, they, aside from being touched by chaos already and having a rather mysterious, interesting past, which had a bit of chaos in it, growing up on Caliban, but I think, once again, the Lion's psychotic loyalty would probably compel him to do so. As he said himself, loyalty is its own reward um, when offered, you know, the chance to fall. So if it was a choice of being loyal to his father, then I do think the lion would do it. I'm so, he's just that loyal and dedicated to his father's dream that if his father's dream suddenly became make me a god, then I think he would follow it. Once again, you can negotiate and debate that one, and if you disagree with me, I, I understand, but I think his actions and his thoughts speak for themselves in this case. Ah, uh, and finally, the last loyalist Primarch on this list, loyalist in loose terms, um, Lemon Russ. Once again, a lot of these guys, Primarchs, I've noticed, in my opinion, would have probably fallen to, fall into chaos, yeah, you know, the Emperor's version of chaos, out of sheer loyalty rather than, um, anything else. And Lemon Russ's absolutely psychotic dedication to the, to the Emperor kind of shows. I mean, the fact he willingly became the Emperor's executioner, yeah probably killed off two of his brothers and destroyed their legions. The fact he was willing to, you know, um, stand up to Angron when he started pulling some shit. And the fact that he was just that psychotically dedicated to his father that he misinterpreted his own father's fucking orders and burned down Prospero like the colossal douchebag dickhead bollocking douche he is. Sorry, got carried away there. Uh, kind of speaks for itself in that case. And I'll be honest, I think all of us could see Lemon Russ, Demon Primarch of Corn. Um, I think all of us could. That's just going to how it goes. Alright, well those, now the loyalists are out of the way, you're probably thinking, well, ooh, who's going to be Traitor? Well, in this case, um, I view Traitor in a kind of different way. Um, I view Traitors as the people that would stand up for the Imperium's ideal, stand up for the humanity. Um, and oppose chaos and oppose the tyrannical dictatorship that the Emperor 
probably wouldn't pose if he became turned to chaos and started sacrificing um, the entire population of terror in a giant blood pit or something. So, in that case, I started out with, well, obvious one here, Horus. Horus Lupercal. Now, I was, once again, I was trying to, I think I was overthinking this one a bit and going, well, mate, you know, he is really, was really loyal to his father before Davin, before he, Chaos manipulated him. You know, I don't know. But I think the fact that if Chaos showed him a bullshit thing where the Emperor, you know, was worshipped as a god, um, and he was forgotten about, and he followed it based on that, I think if his father actually did fall to Chaos and tried to become a god, then he would stand up and oppose it. While he is a bit of a douchebag and a bit arrogant, I think Horace Keith gives a shit, enough of a shit about the Imperium and about its people to actually stand up and defend them. And he is known um, for opposing his father on a few issues. I mean, if you read some of the earlier Horace Heresy stuff, he opposed um, his father's issues about taxation and stuff for the Imperial sub-citizens and wasn't 100% in favour of some of his father's ideas. So, with that being said, let's move to the next one. Jagatai Khan of the Fifth Legion. Now this one is, once again, if you know anything about the Fifth Legion, this is a fucking no-brainer. The Khan already disliked and disagreed with his father's beliefs and ideals for the Imperium. He saw kind, the Imperium kind of as a bit of a dictatorship, um, but he went along with it because he realized it was better than, you know, what it was. Um, so he kind of saw it as a bit of a dictatorship, and he hated the fact that the Emperor just seemed to be keep building walls. He and kind of just gluttoning on their own... You know, strength, which he wasn't a big fan of. And also, if you know about the Fifth Legion and Khan, the Khan was actually willing to join Horus um, at the start of the heresy. If the only reason he didn't, he really wanted to. He loved Horus more than anyone else, more than his father, and he really actually felt and wanted to join Horus. The reason that he didn't was because he realized he'd been corrupted by Chaos, because Magnus the Red told him. If he hadn't been corrupted by Chaos, then he would have easily joined him. If it was a rebellion, or a heresy based on the fact the Emperor was a douchebag, rather than the fact that, you know, um, Horus had fallen to Chaos, the Khan would have joined him. Simple as that. The Khan's hatred of, you know, tyrannical dictatorships and his love for his brother would have compelled him to do it. And I think we could have easily seen the Khan on the side of the Horus in the regular heresy, let alone if the Emperor turned to Chaos. Alright. Ah, uh, Vulcan! This is another obvious one. If the Emperor started blood sacrificing and making summoning demons and trying to become a Chaos God and became a tyrannical dictator and bastard who, you know, as I said, sacrificed the Terran citizens to summon bloodthirsters, then Vulcan's love for the citizens of the Imperium would have compelled him to fight against his father. He would have done it. it was, it's... I don't even know why I'm explaining it to you. Vulcan's just such a nice guy that he would. He would stand up for the civilians, and he would protect them, and he's just a good guy. He would do so. Okay. Now, another one that should actually make no fucking... Another one that should be obvious to anyone with a brain is Angron. Angron of the 12th Legion. Now, Angron hated his father. He absolutely hated the Emperor for saving him, rather than letting him, you know, um, sacrifice himself alongside his true brothers and sisters. Um... He absolutely hated the idea of, of you know, oppression and dictatorships. I mean, he grew up on a planet where he was literally a slave, fighting against a, you know, tyrannical dictatorship government. I mean, seriously. He hated that. He hated them. He hated his, the fact his father saved him. He hated the fact that his father was such a hypocrite when he just saw the Imperium as another tyrannical dictatorship going around, you know, blowing up other planets and doing whatever the hell it wants. Um, so if his father generally, and he actually said himself to Russ that he would love to have take that, take his, that slaving bastard's head, um, when referring to the Emperor. So if the Emperor actually did turn to chaos, then Angron would be standing against him with dual chain axes in hand wanting to cut his head off. It's obvious. Now I know what you're thinking, oh well, the world eaters are so, so psychotic, they probably would have just, you know, stayed loyal and turned to corn. Well, no. The reason they turned to corn was because Lorgar pushed them into it, really, um, and there are, and that's the only reason Angron became a demon prince. I honestly think that if it was 
situation was reversed and the Emperor was the bad guy, then Angron would be willing to stand against him. Okay? Okay. Next one is Corvus Corax of the 19th Legion. Now, I know another one what you're thinking. Oh, what? Corax? No way. Yes. Because once again, Corax... Corax hated tyrannical dictatorships with a freaking passion. And he hated evil and corruption where he saw it. I mean, this is the guy that, you know, he banished a whole bunch of his legion when he re when he realized they were more like night lords than raven guard. When he saw them as, you know, just monsters and killing whatever they wanted. He banished them. He was willing to admit his own mistakes and he was not tolerating, you know, that level of evil, even in the heart of his own legion. So he... He would have easily stood against his father if he started doing this shit like this. Considering his own hatred of tyrannical dictatorships and his love for the love for the people, I think Korak would have stood against his father if he genuinely turned to chaos. And I think he's just that type of guy. Alright. Uh, next one. I know I'm quick firing these, but I could spend five years going through every argument, but I just want to quick fire these and you know, see what you think. The next one is Peter Rablo. Now, Peter Rablo, interesting douchebag dickhead that he is, I'm not a big fan, um, he would have stood against his father in that because he didn't actually agree with the Imperium in the first place. He did see it as a tyrannical dictatorship, which is something he hated. If you know much about Peter Rablo and you read Angel Exterminatus, then Peter Rablo, all he ever wanted was to rule the planet like it was a democracy, an old-style Greek democracy. He didn't want war, he didn't want violence, he hated dictators, he hated tyrannical overlords. Um, all he wanted to do was just live in peace and be, you know, kind of a scholar. That's what he wanted to be. And if his father willingly, you know, started, you know, summoning, as I said, be turned to chaos, then he would stand against him. He would stand against the corruption, he would stand against the tyrannical dictatorships, and he would once more be tearing at the walls of the Imperial Palace with siege weaponry, um, trying to bring his father to justice. So that's another one I don't really think needs too much explaining. Uh, next guy on the list that would stay traitor, although traitor is an odd term to use in this scenario, a uh, Mortarian. Now there's not too much known about Mortarian because he's never really been the star of his own book, but I think Mortarian's... Mortarian wasn't a big fan of his father. He had, had quite a lot of daddy issues because of, you know, his adoptive... his fa actual father killing his adoptive father and, you know, um, how he was kind of treated and a lot of issues around there. Um, plus the fact that I do think he kind of saw the Imperium as a bit corrupt, a bit tyrannical as well. I think he kind of... He, his hatred of sorcery would certainly show up. And if the Emperor started summoning demons and, you know, praying sigils to the Zench, I'm pretty sure he would stand against them just on that alone. But that, plus his love for his brother Horus, I think Mortarion would have probably turned against his father and tried to, you know, stop the demonic asshole and, you know, cut his head off with his scythe. So, not too much fluff about that. You, If you know more about Mortarion and you think that he would, you know, stay loyal, then let me know in the comments, but I think that's where he would be. Okay, well, uh, last one left for the loyalist factor, or the traitor factor. Mm, it's hard to mix those, it's mixing those two words up, because you associate loyalist with good and traitor with evil, but in this scenario, it's actually reversed. Interesting little bit of wordplay and conundrum there. Anyway, uh, the last one on the traitor list, the traitor good guy list, is Rebute Gilliman. Now, I was thinking about putting him on the fence for this one, but I think that he would have actually stood against his father because he never really agreed with his father completely um, in a lot of areas, like the areas of the Imperium. He valued the Imperium more over his father and believes that the Imperium was stronger than the Emperor, which is why he immediately created the Imperium Secundus. The fact that he was willing to create his own separate Imperium when he thought the first Imperium was lost shows that, you know, his loyalty to the Imperium outweighs his loyalty to his father. And the, a lot of, you know, little things he did after the heresy, you know, the Codex Astartes and stuff, 
proves that he's kind of more interested in the Imperium and its people rather than you know, interested in the Emperor. Kind of sad, but it's kind of true if you read a lot of his work. Well, a lot of work about Gilliman. So, with that being said, I think he would have actually stood against him. If the Emperor just came out and started becoming, you know, a complete tyrannical dictating asshole and summoning warp storms and summoning demons, and I think Gilliman would have stood against him. Whether he would have stayed on the fence, built his own Imperium in, um, based around the 500 worlds and wait to see how it played out is up for the debate. But I honestly think if Horace came to him and showed him the truth about what his father was doing, um, if his father turned to chaos, then I think he would have offered up the Ultramarines and the 500 worlds as support um, to back them up. Once again, you can debate me on this one, but I think the that Gilliman's already notable um, transgressions against his father and his beliefs in the Imperium over his father would probably have compelled him to do so. <laughs> well, well, well. It seems that we only have three Primarchs left, and the savvy amongst you will know who they are. But once again, we may as well have a bit of fun with this. And da da da, the ones I cannot decide slash on the fence slash have no bloody clue. Right, we'll get the obvious one out of the way. Alpharius. I spent quite a lot of time today while I was at work internally debating whether to put him on the loyalist, the traitor, or the undecided list. And I ended up just putting him on the undecided list because it's Alpharius. And who bloody knows? I mean, seriously, there are some... I kind of thought maybe he'd stay loyal to his father because, you know, he was, um, as it said in Legion, you know, the Alpha Legion is, have, is, has and always will be for the Emperor, which is a direct quote from Alpharius. But, once again, if they were willing to join Chaos, to stay loyal, to, to betray Chaos, it's just... It's just so much of a cluster from the list, you know, that I just, I have no idea. So, they stay in the undecided list. Maybe it would be like an actual, in the actual heresy. You know, where half of them stay loyal, half of them go traitor, and half of them do whatever. So, that's the Alpha Legion, and we all know how that goes. Right, next one on the list is Magnus the Red. Now, once again, I was really not sure where to put Magnus, because... I like to think because of his love for humanity, and because he actually did, if you read the thing about him, and his like for, you know, psychers and stuff like that, that he would probably have, you know, betrayed his father and joined up with Horace. But, once again, you've got to put the whole Szynch thing in action. If the flesh change came back and started hitting his legion, and his father said, you know, oh, join me and I can stop it, um, then maybe he could have fallen. It's just... There are too many variables at work. There's the flesh change itself, Magnus's deal with the Zinch, his loyalty to his father, um, which is outweighed by, you know, his loyalty to the Imperium, and the fact that he was, you know, willing to stand against Chaos and use his powers, you know, in the first place, kind of puts him on the fence. It could go either way, but I personally would like to think that Magnus and the Thousand Sons would be fighting against um, the Chaotic Emperor, but uh, we'll see. Okay. The last one on the list. The one that you've all, none of you, some of you, insert appropriate word here, have been waiting for. The Angel, Sanguinius. Once again, this is a similar scenario to Magnus, in that it could have gone either way. Now, I like to think that his love for humanity and peace and, you know, Sanguinius' all-round good guy nature would compel him to stand against the chaotically, demonically possessed Emperor and stand alongside his close brother Horus. But, on the flip side, his psychotic dedication of loyalty to his father, which is loyalty out of fear as well as loyalty out of loyalty's sake, um, the fact that, you know, he was already touched by chaos with his wings and the fact that his legion had the black rage and the red thirst in their hearts, could he could be tipped over the edge, you know, if his father and Chaos worked together, they could possibly turn the Blood Angels into a Cornate thing and turn him into a blood a demon prince of corn. Or, it could go the either way and Sanguinius could say, stuff that, and take down his father and stand alongside Horus. So it could go either way. I'd like to think that, you know, he would stand against corruption and injustice and 
you know, stand alongside his closest brother Horus, but once again, his loyalty to the, to the Emperor and the other variables involved mean it could go either way. So yes, that's my list. I don't think I've missed anybody out. And I would like you to let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you, who do you think would stay loyal? Who do you think would stay traitor? Um, do you agree or disagree with what I've been saying here? And just generally let me know. So yeah, no, thank you very much if you actually listened to 25 minutes of this drivel. And I guess I will catch you all again with another Gwim 40k discussion thingamadoob. Need a new name for this series at some point. Another time. Goodbye. Boop.